Hi, everyone. So I'm Sarah, and I'm a first year here studying molecular and cellular biology. And this is also what my project is about. So it all comes down to food protection, which I think is important because it's important for everyone what we eat. And unfortunately, usually we don't really know exactly what we eat because we're just being lied to. But <laughs> this is not exactly what I'm going to talk about. So um, Jesus, where do I point to change? Oh, here, OK. So the scientific title of my project is The Essential Oils uh, Influence on the Selected Plant Pathogens in like a very general sense. And uh, I was examining that to verify their potential as uh, specificities for plant protection and food protection. So it all just came down to the question of how plants can be used to protect other plants. And this is also the reasoning that led me to finding my topic. Because, um, well, we know that plants and herbs are commonly used in human medicine. And for me, it kind of made sense that if plants produce something that can help humans, then it should also work for plants themselves. And so the project started three years ago. And actually, by the end of February, it will be our third anniversary together of the project. And uh, I did that in Poland because I'm um, an international student coming from Poland uh, in my local university back in Gdańsk. And um, I basically got accepted there as a high school student for an internship that was supposed to be two weeks long, turned into two and a half years. Yay. <laughs> and um, basically the whole motivation, the official motivation behind the project was that in 2009, there was this uh, policy introduced by the European Union that basically delegalized, um, well, removed 7% of uh, pesticides from the market and uncertified 67%, which showed for the first time that actually we need new technologies that have a little bit of a different approach that are ecological and that could be used long term in plant and food production. And so, yes. These are the alternatives that are modernly used. They do not, um, um, well, apart from the uh, food additives, which are calcium propionate or sodium nitrate, these are more of mechanical um, ways of protecting your food. So that's control, controlled atmosphere with carbon dioxide, for example, vacuum packaging, electric field radiation. And uh, I just think that they are not innovative enough and they're boring. So I decided to suggest my own alternative to that. And so I started looking at three main reasons why we should need innovative and ecological and at the same time cheap alternatives to these methods, which are listed here, for example. And these are the three principles that my project also satisfied, luckily. And uh, what the project is exactly about. So I took essential oils, five essential oils of the plants that are mentioned behind me. So that was eucalyptus, cinnamon, thyme, peppermint, and uh, bergamot orange. And well, I chose them just because they were the cheapest ones. They were freely available on the market and also they're used in herbal medicine. So already their bactericidal and fungicidal properties were, were proven in scientific, scientific literature. And I decided that I want to use them to combat plant diseases. So first, there was this whole preparation phase when I had to check the ingredients inside the essential oils to see if the producer that I'm cooperating with, which is kind of my best friend at the moment, um, whether they uh, would be the same if someone tried to repeat my research somewhere else in the world, because univers universality of technology is something very important. And so, these were the four main stages of the project happening throughout these uh, two and a half years, three years. So uh, first it was preparing and checking whether it will be universal, if it works, then um, doing some tests on bacteria, then switching to plants, which is an absolute nightmare. And I, this is, no, this is why I chose molecular biology, not biotechnology, because rotting plants and then scrubbing out the rotten part and smelling that just makes you hate food forever. And uh, so please appreciate the sacrifice. Um, and so these are the results. So on the top, you can see actual uh, lab results. So for example, 
On the left, you have orange smear test, so basically just taking a cotton um, pin, rubbing over an orange, then putting it on a display, and you get some nasty things, as you can see at the top. But if you just put a little drop of um, essential oil that is concentrated in less than 1%, you can see this amazing halo around where uh, all of these nasty things can grow. So that actually proved that these oils would work universally, not only for some specific selected bacteria, and they are actually very, very effective. And so after the research phase, we came up with the idea to start commercializing the project. And um, in terms of the administ administration procedures, you can't really patent something that comes from nature because it just doesn't correspond to the legal requirements. And I started thinking, okay, so maybe I can mix the oils and see whether they work together even better. And then I can actually create a product that could be commercialized and sold to companies and basically conquer the market and make me a billionaire. So uh, the whole idea was to put different essential oils, including the ones that I mentioned, the, the fine, five main ones, put them together uh, in different proportions, different dilutions, in order to get such wonderful effects. And um, that actually worked. And the most amazing thing is that no one exactly knows what works because there are so many compounds inside these oils that even the chemical analysis doesn't give you everything. And actually scientific literature would say that these are the, very, the, the, the substances that are in very small concentrations that are just you know, in the shadow of the dominant ones that make it so effective. And at the same time, they make it impossible, I mean, for now, for bacteria to develop resistance to it which is really good because that's the problem with pesticides used nowadays as well. And so um, we came up with, I, I, I'm saying we because now that it's starting to, commercial, to be commercialized, I'm cooperating with, with people who help me in business matters. And um, so we came up with four possible implementations. The first one and the main one is agriculture because these are plant pathogens and the bacteria and fung fungi that we were researching are the ones responsible for most economical losses in terms of food cultivation. Uh, but at the same time, we're looking very closely at active packaging because these oils, these compositions could be implemented into polymers and basically just plastic containers or plastic bowls that you can use inside your house to store fruit and this way uh, make them uh, health, like stay not rotten for longer. And uh, at the same time, um, it could be a product that is directed uh, at um, disinfection, just because we're diluting it a lot for food uh, so that it doesn't alter the taste and it's not uh, harmful to humans in any way. But in higher concentrations, because they are really strong, you could use it to disinfect lab uh, surfaces or even transport containers in which cargoes in which uh, the food is uh, traveling around the world. And so the project started as an academic project and um, I was going with, I was participating with it in some science competitions. So for example, we managed to get an award on International um, Environment and Sustainability Project Olympiad in Amsterdam or in European Union Competition for Young Scientists. And one of the awards was the mentoring of PricewaterhouseCoopers. So these are the people who are now helping me with uh, commercializing the project. And this is the whole plan on how to proceed further because even if you develop something that is innovative and new, you usually have a lot of competition. So. I'm not going to be the one to fight the pesticide companies because I'm probably going to get assassinated at some point if I do that. So um, we decided that it's better to just work on a license uh, business model. And uh, since, it's, since, since it's patentable, that's something that you can do. You can just give companies uh, the insight into um, your technology and then they can use it while paying you money in return. Maybe if we are successful in that sphere. We could develop our own branded product, which would be for home use and shop use for um, producers to just spray something over fruit in a shop while they're waiting for customers, like in Tesco, for example. 
uh, so that when everyone's going and touching and feeling like, mm, I don't like how this apple feels, and just putting it back and putting all of the bacteria from their hand on the fruit, um, and which obviously contributes to it rotting faster, then someone could just spray something like this over and slow down the, the spoilage process. But then, when it comes to business, um, and when the possibility of getting money appears, there are always some problems. So I'm a victim of this kind of conflict right now. And this is an advice for every single one of you who wants to start a project. So always make sure in the beginning that you're, you have the agreement with the lab where you're working and that everything from the administrative side of you is clear. Because last week, I just got an email that I got sued in Poland because uh, the lab where I was working uh, wants the money back for all of the hours that I spent there while I was working there, which is absolutely absurd because I was 17 and I wasn't signing anything and it wasn't a deal with my school. And don't worry, I mean, it's just a threat. I'm not going to jail, so <laughs> that's okay. Uh, but this is very important. So when you're starting a project, make sure you have all of the administrative stuff figured out with, with where you're working. Also, it's worth checking if something that you do is innovative because then it's actually a lot of fun and it gives you a lot of satisfaction when you can patent something and put it into the real world. It's just absolutely priceless when you can see that something that you are working on in the lab can actually become the part of reality. And actually, this is something that I just wanted to mention as I, as I finish. So um, because I really can't stay focused on one thing for a very long period of time, because that's just the way I am, now I found my new biggest passion, which is space biology. And it's something that is really cool. And if anyone is interested in physiology, medicine, or anything science-oriented, like bi biomed science-oriented, go into space biology, because it's great and it's fascinating. And uh, maybe, that's kind of a maybe for this project, um, I want to start working on the idea of how this technology could be used either as an antibacterial coating uh, for uh, space travel, like for spaceships, because that's a problem that they have, because when they're isolated in the environment in space for a long period of time, uh, they get, tend to get ill. That's because their immunity system stops working properly. And at the same time, uh, they are just isolated and uh, in sterile conditions. So they tend to be ill and there's high necessity for some uh, antimicrobial materials on the spaceships. And at the same time, if we want to start colonizing Mars, we'll have to start space farming. So that's a perfect opportunity for these eco-pesticides to you know, become a pesticide giant on Mars. So that's the plan. And so uh, I actually invite you, we have a website because the project is now called Neo Ecology from Natural Essential Oils Technology. And um, I mean, it's, I'm currently changing some things on the website, so it's probably in maintenance mode, but just give me two days and it will be ready to go if someone wants to uh, learn more. And these are my details. So if anyone is interested in opportunities in space biology or wants to hear more about the project, then feel free to contact me. Thank you. Thank you, Sara. Uh, I have a question about um, resistance of the mm -hmm. uh, of your um, antibiological uh, preparations. Uh, could you elaborate more on that uh, on that uh, resistance part? And also, uh, I have a question about how um, did you manage to get anything that is resistant to the current? Uh, viruses, bacteria, and so on. Okay, so in terms of resistance, the whole problem is it's, it's kind of the same mechanism as, it, as in um, antibiotic resistance. So if you expose microorganisms uh, to something for a very long period of time, since they replicate so quickly, they also mutate very quickly, which results in their fast adaptation. So um, the whole problem is that microorganisms are actually pretty intelligent. So if you're using something to kill them, at some point there will be this one little 
sneaky bacteria that will become resistant to it. And um, I mean, that's the, that's the general fear that we now have. And the whole hope with uh, natural compounds, like essential oils, is that they are actually composed of not even you know, two or three, not even a couple of tens, but a couple of hundreds, thousands, like hundreds or thousands uh, substances. So, and they are in different uh, proportions. Some of them are more powerful, more, more um, apparent. The other ones are the shadow ones that I was mentioning. So because of their complexity, it's suspective and so far uh, it has not been rejected by any scientific experiment that it's very, it takes a very long time or it's impossible for bacteria to uh, develop resistance towards these compounds, if that answers your question. Yeah, and so, so far, none of the bacteria that I was uh, examining for these few years, um, nor any research in scientific literature, didn't give me the idea that it could be possible for them to become resistant. Uh, so pretty much right now we're experiencing, uh, as you probably know, um, population growth. Um, they're predicting 9 billion people by 2050 and uh, they've got uh, problems with climate change as well. How important do you think uh, your research and similar research is to like, humanity at this moment right now? Um, thank you. So, um, actually, 20% uh, of all fruits and vegetables that are produced every year are going to waste just because of spoilage or contamination on the way. And so, as our population grows, also the food production grows. And uh, unfortunately, this is not equal on different continents. We have people who are starving, but at the same time, we have people who are just throwing away something uneaten. So this is one of the, well, the whole idea behind implementing this project is to first contribute to lowering food spoilage in the Western world. But at the same time, since it's natural and it's very cheap and it's stable so far, uh, as we researched, it could be also an opportunity to implement in uh, developing countries because the costs are really low and the technology is very simple. So, um, well, these are the, the very big plans, but uh, maybe that will be possible and hence, this is one of the technologies that we hope will go with the trend of sustainable food preservation and better food management. If that answers your question, yeah, thank you. Okay, so thanks very much. Thank you. And again, if you would like to... Thank you.